Hello everyone and welcome to Season 10 of the BBLS. This is our first episode looking at uh, this incredible season in this incredible league. And today I have with me a returning coach this time, the um, Pygo Centris, wasn't it? Yeah, Pygo Centris. Alright, so I'm your host mentioning the amazing and, and with me is Pygo Centris and today the two of us will be looking at the uh, different drafts in the Earth conferences. Hello. Uh, we'll be looking at it. Uh, do you want to explain the different axes that we are looking at them across? Uh. I mean, you can do it. <laughs> okay. So, we'll be looking at them to contemplate um, whether they're top more... We expect their teams to look more top-heavy and wide in terms of usage, so if we expect them to oscillate around a few Pokémon, uh, then it would be top-heavy, and then if we expect to see a lot of different Pokémon putting in a lot of work, then we might say that it's a pretty wide team. Uh, if we expect them to be attempting pretty consistently to play towards games which are short and focused on getting a lot of KOs in, throughout the early game, uh, and, and focusing generally on that offensive sort of uh, build. We'd say they're pretty high tempo, and if we expect them to play towards the, uh, a lot of later game win conditions, uh, and uh, focusing a lot on uh, defensive or support play in the early game, then we might put them more towards the long game. So, um, is this the wrong set of teams? It is, yes. Uh, so it's this 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 one I'm looking at. <laughs> I didn't click on the wrong teams today or anything. Um, so this is our first team, the Philadelphia Ash Whoopers. Would you like to uh, go through what's on the team? Uh, sure. Just talk about the Mons. Yeah. Alright. Well, Tornadoes was like the highest point one or one of the highest point ones. Uh, the season, right? For sure. Yeah, it was at 25. Yeah. It's... Prankster Tailwind is really good. And it has a lot of other support moves. Uh, Typhlosion, Typhlosion and Sui win so fast in all of the drafts. I feel like... Yes. I don't know. I was hoping to get um, all three of the Hiswayan starters. Uh, and then Typhlosion went absurdly early. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, maybe not. Uh, I believe it also gets eruption, so that's it. It does, yeah. 95 base speed, and then it's got like a signature move, which is middling base power. Um, it's like Hex, but with a chance to burn. Yeah, Hex with a chance to burn, but I think it's a bit weaker than Hex as well, for some reason. 60 base power, maybe? I don't yeah. Know. Uh, well, there's multiple Hisui mons. There's Gujar Hisui, which I have heard multiple things about it in Regulation D. It, it beats me on ladder a lot. <laughs> I just quite like its design. Uh, uh, heavy Slam Body Press is a really good combination in like the ladder meta, though I'd be interested to see how much of the rest of its pretty deep moveset it gets to use in uh, the draft context. Yeah. It, yeah, it, it has a usable attack and special attack and a lot of moves to bows for both of them, so I will be excited to see that. Uh, Overquill has great typing. I don't really know about its offenses, despite me having drafted it. Uh, <laughs> oh, you, uh, you drafted it as well, yeah. Um, last time I played an Overquill, my opponent ran a special attacking set with a Chilling Water and Sludge Bomb. Um, with its 65 special attack, and it won, so it must be good. Hey, um, uh, it was a defensive set. Um, intimidate, uh, swift swim at poison point. I think as abilities. Pretty good abilities. Uh, intimidate's very strong, and then swift swim is like a conditional thing, but a condition you can easily activate with tornadoes. Yeah, it's... Hatterene is a great trick room setter. Don't think they'll be using trick room. I mean... But, uh... 
I feel like all these Pokemon, like Gudra can definitely function in Trick Room. Gudra can, yeah. I Overcool probably can, right? It's um, yeah, it's eighty-five, which is towards outside way. It, like you know, I think seventy-five-ish is probably around where I would stop wanting, like default wanting to Pokemon to go in Trick Room. But you know, Hatterene in, its, in itself is really good. Last season we saw like a lot of specs uh, Hatterene, which wasn't indexing on Trick Room, but was just indexing on damage. Yeah, it has a great special attack and decent move for post for that. Uh, Rotom Frost. Uh, it, Rotom with Blizzard. Uh, and what else is there to say? For Snowscape. Yeah. And there's Garchomp. Garchomp loves snow. Uh, Famously. Yeah, what? I mean, I guess it pairs well with Tornadus. It pairs very well with Tornadus. Also, it pairs okay with Rotom because you can disc quick. Uh, yeah, that's makes sense. I was just looking at everything else and being like, there's so many Earthquake Week mods. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely an interesting uh, pairing, but obviously you can still use Terrestrialization to get around it. Uh, or just don't click Earthquake. Does it have... It doesn't get high force power. Does it get something tangible? Yes. Uh, but you can also click Dragon Move. Or um, Earth Power yeah. off of the 80 special attack, which isn't bad. Uh, it's just not as good as the 130 attack. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, Bear Tick. Great mod. And it, it has Swoosh Swim and uh, Slush Rush. So, Tornadus is... The Rain Team. Rain team. Hey, manual rain team. The manual rain team. The magnificent Wug Trio. What's alright? What? What was that you said? Oh, I said the magnificent Wug Trio. Exactly, exactly. I mean, Wug Trio was um, Wug Trio was on both Grand Finals teams, so Wug Trio won both divisions last season. It, yeah, that was kind of insane. It's a very good Pokemon. Uh, when, whenever I was like mocking with someone playing as Ray, Wug was always like a reasonable mon to consider because of its high speed and the fact that it has a uh, multi-hit move, so it can like play around Sashes, which those uh, teams yeah, may otherwise struggle into. Uh, and there's do what? I. It's Pokemon. Um, it has 75 attack and 83 special attack. It probably would have preferred if, like, you took out 20 from that physical attack and put it into the special attack. It's got pretty reasonable bulk with Eviolite. I don't know, it does, I think it, it's long I think it might be one hand. of the weaker, um, not fully evolved, uh, water starters. Like, the mid middle stage water starters. I wouldn't know. Also, it's... Uncorn and Helping Hand are pretty decent support moves. Helping Hand is, is a very good option. Any Pokemon with Helping Hand becomes more threatening than a Pokemon without it. A Starly. Starly Does is... Uh, no. <laughs> it's got Reckless. That 55 attack. I On paper... It may be threatening to a team that's weak to flying, though I don't. I feel like, you know, just click with Torn. I think it may be, it's just there to dissuade opposing teams who would like just copy and paste this team into like a Bullhawk dock and then see, oh, you know, they have a pretty reasonable matchup into, um, into Ghost. So, overall, would you say that this team feels more top heavy or wide? Well, I feel like besides Duat and Starly, the top like nine mons are all pretty usable. I mean, that is including like, Woltrio, Beartick, and Rotom Frost. Yeah, I feel like I think the tornado is get... coming to. Ev yeah, I was gonna say I think Tornadus that a lot of more Pokemon can come, but are enabled by Tornadus. Yeah, Tornadus is coming every game. I feel like that's just we know that. Uh. I mean, Garchomp's probably coming with Tornadus. A reasonable uh, amount of time. So I think 
it's fairly top heavy, but like. Well, do you expect them? So, uh, Tornadus and Garchomp coming most games is pretty. I think fair. It, I think it's like slightly wide. Do slightly we expect the wide. Do we expect the other Pokemon? Um, do we expect these four to feature most of the time, or do we think that it's pretty reasonable to see um, Rotom, Basic, or Wugtrio, or even Duodo Starly switch out one of these other four Pokemon? Because I think they, you know, maybe Rotom. Um, I think we kind of see a cast of like four Pokemon coming pretty consistently. Yeah. So uh, I probably yeah, I don't, I don't put this like team over here. Yeah. Right. Still getting used to this. That's all right. Yeah. That, that, it's a learning process. Um, also, you, I'm Very not sure if you did your homework of rewatching my previous four of these. So yeah. Uh, I started watching one. You know what? We'll take. I, think it. I got most of the way through it, but that was a couple days ago. We'll take it. Um, so Typhlosion, Gushra, Overquill, Hatterene. I feel like, and then Torn and Garchomp, and then you might see. You know, I, I feel like these seven Pokemon are the ones that are coming most of the times. Basic may come, Wotrio may come, maybe Duot yeah, will come, um, but I don't expect them to come to maybe more than two games. I was thinking that, like, max three games in the season. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, like, and I feel like this, this team definitely isn't playing for a long game. Well, this team is one of the That's better long game win conditions in the format in Gudra. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Just, all um, the other months don't and then like, super long. Typhlosion does have that burn, and then you've got the Intimidate with Overquill. You can use defensive options on um, Tornadus. But I would say it probably indexes a bit towards... Like, this is a very mid rangey sort of team, but I think... I'm um, sorry. I think actually an index is maybe a little bit towards long game. Um, all right. But it's got a lot of immediate damage, and then it's got a lot of... Uh, all right, let me set Tailwind and maybe like go for, um, you know, you can nasty plot with a, a Typhlosion or you can just click Eruption. Uh, you can go for like the um, offensive Hatterene, which speed invested Hatterene is pretty usable in, in Tailwind as well. Um, a lot of Pokemon get very fast when you double their speed for some reason. Uh, and then, yeah, so a lot, a lot of these Pokemon can function in that sort of mid-range sort of area, and that's kind of, I think, where I would expect it to go. Maybe a little bit less towards long game. Yeah, just, like, pretty much in the middle of everything. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say I expect it to be a pretty, pretty reliably mid-rangey team, which can function with um, that tempo win condition and function with that long game win condition if the matchup is particularly favorable for either of them. But I certainly don't think that's what we expect to see in the game. So, the Bokaton Roton Belly Bolts with your coach, Kodamron. Uh, well, there's Lander's Theory. <laughs> like, uh, the first thing I as like, a singles uh, you know, I, I look at this team. <laughs> as a singles player, you think that Lander's Theory isn't particularly good. It only ever sees like 40% usage in singles, whereas it sees like 70% usage in VGC. Yeah, I have seen his usage in BGC. I, I was just looking up what it gets to try to figure it out. Uh, Earthquake? I mean... With Rotom Heat. That's fair, yeah, I... Earthquake with Mesprit. Earthquake with Fletchender. Earthquake with Articuno. Honestly, you can click Earthquake next to Amoongus, it doesn't care. That's what I was about to say, it's... 145 attack, Intimidate, yeah, I... 105 special attack as well. I. So I, I, I think the Bosnova and Metatite are usable Pokemon. Mostly because we've seen a Bomb Snow and Snova do some stuff in. Um, yeah, Snova is usable. And then Metatite. It's got skill swap, pure power. And like, it's not weak in and of itself. But I wouldn't expect it to come to more than one game. I think that this theoretically the Snow Articuno pocket thing can come to uh, like three or four games. It is impressive how good Articuno is with the um uh, with the uh, Snow Cloak and the physical defense boost from Snow. I would not have known that, so it's pretty interesting. I Slicko. I'm just also kind of wondering. 
uh, like Urshfu single strike because it is so expensive. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just kind of wondering if it's properly supported in Steam. Fletch Ender's Tailwind. What do you need to do to support to, like, a Shifu single strike in your perspective? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I just feel like it needs. I think you need good fairy something resists. to help it. <laughs> yeah, good fairy resist, which like in Amoongus and Sligu, Sui, I feel like you have. I guess technically you doesn't resist fairy, but... it's neutral. It's oh, a yeah. Dragon. It's... Yep. But I mean, it's taking it. These, these are two of the best, uh, like better fairy resists in the format. Though I, I, I don't know. I had a pretty mixed bag with Rotom Heat last season. Um, like Inteleon is like, a fast icy wind option. Fleshend has got that tailwind. Um, theoretically, Articuna can also tailwind. I also think that all you need to do to support a Shifu on a team is um, put a Shifu on a team. <laughs> don't, don't play that much Fuji. Like, not to be blasé, but it, it doesn't really rely on support to do particularly much. There are things it can do to, like, get even more extreme, like, uh, you know, Gothitelle is not an unpopular partner to stop your opponent from being able to switch or being able to protect. Um, and then, you know, Fake Out can put that even extra third layer of pressure on them. So, you know, like, that's, that's a lot of stuff that you can do with a Shifu. Um, but you can also just, you know... Slap a scuff or a choice band or life orb or black glasses or whatever on a Shifu or, or a Sash and then just have it on a team and it's good. That's that's fair. Um, so I, I don't think that you, yeah. Like, I, I wouldn't be too right. concerned about Colby being able to play around with really all of these Pokemon. Um, I think the, the fact that these Pokemon all kind of, well, I, I guess Metatite doesn't really want Eviolite. Uh, with its 30, 55, 55. But, it, you know, taking that Sash there. And then you also have Inteleon, who is okay with Sash. Um, but I think it gets, I believe it gets dual screens. Like, this won't show me. Um, I believe Inteleon does get dual does. screens. It does. So, I would say this team is probably about here in terms of wide. I think I kind of expect Landorus and Rotom to come most games. Yeah, yeah. Urshifu is probably coming most. I think it's interesting to see Colby pick up Amoongus after not having, uh, after Fungus not doing that much last season. Um, mostly in the sense of Fungus not being brought much, rather than Fungus not doing stuff when it came. Um, it like defeated a Dondozo that set up, right? Yeah, but you kind of hope <laughs> it would, considering it is built in a way which. Uh, is very good into that Dozo sort of build. Um, so yeah. the Boke, Roton, Belly Bolt. I mean, I think this team is pretty tempo heavy. Uh, yeah. With like Tailwind and Lander's Theory and then Hershfu's Single Strike just being insanely I think powerful. Their best like, Flesh, game Flesh. sort of mod. So there's like Sligu and like Rotom. Sligu can do some of the things that Gooder can't. So. Yes, it doesn't get body press though. Doesn't. Ah, that sucks. I think that's generally true for most not fully evolved Pokemon. I think that that's like one of those moves which is so much uh, favored towards fully evolved Pokemon over not fully evolved Pokemon. I remember back when body press was first announced and we thought Eviolite would affect it and we're like, oh my gosh, Onyx is going to be so good. That would have been cool, but, but no. Onyx is 95 to, speed and 160 Onyx defense. Very... Have to keep doing dirty. Dude, the Onyx. No, no. I mean, people thought it might be usable on ladder, like uh, oh. uh, with with the big boy. <laughs> I was seeing some calcs where it was like, oh gosh, look at this Onyx. It <laughs> there's like, um, uh, it occurs like an absurd number of Pokemon because it's 160 defense and Eviolite, which is basically a choice band boost on body press. <laughs> yeah, I, that was pretty insane. Uh, that's funny. Um, beyond that, yeah, uh, I feel like. What does Mesper really do? It is levitate. Or... It's like it's it's reasonably strong. It's reasonably defensive. It's good trick room setter. It's got pretty good offense. I. Yeah. It has a whole lot of moves. 
It's got a lot of moves. Uh, physical and special. Off of its 80... Uh, 105? 105, sorry. It's 80, 80, yeah. and then 105's in the middle. It's fine. Um, I think that, yeah, this team definitely indexes pretty hard towards tempo. You can run, like, a calm yeah, mind... Mesprit, but I think the fact that the only Pokemon here with recovery are Amoongus Articuno kind of limits a lot of the rest of them. I think Fletchender might also have Roost. But, yeah. Fletchender gets Roost, I believe, yeah. Yeah, so I feel like that does limit the ability of this team to play more towards a late game. But, you know, Amoongus Pollen Puff yeah. can kind of cover over that. So, we'll, this team isn't max yeah, tempo. Yeah, that's why I don't think it's... And it does it's have fairly high. the Intimidate. But I, I think it, it wound up being a lot more tempo, I think, than Colby's last team looked. So, Sora. Finally, the champ has gone back. Um, so, do you want to run us through the team? Alright. Well, there's Ursaluna, the bear. Yep. Uh, an insane the bear naked side. ladies. Uh, Like the band? I bulletproof. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know. Cool. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sableye's funny. Um, it was it. Luna, probably one of the best offensive options in the game. I remember I was looking about. I was looking at a calc of whether it was worth trying to click Earth uh, like high horsepower into Heatran, uh, and then I saw that if I expect it to protect, I can just sword stance and then one hit KO it with the facade, whether it terrors or not. Um, so I click facade and it died. Sword stance first. Ursaluna is a very fair, balanced, and reasonable Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I, Guts, Guts is obviously like its main ability, but I feel like Bulletproof it, 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 is definitely a good ability. Does it counter Energy run. Ball? I believe it does counter Energy Ball, which is one of the main things for Ursaluna since it's already immune to Shadow Ball. Um, uh, yeah. Don't. I know there are, obviously, there's a number of ballistic moves. Uh, so, yes, Ursaluna, very strong. Uh, I do feel like the fact that it doesn't cover um, Moonblast sucks. That, yeah. Sableye is a really powerful prankster Pokemon. Absolutely. Um, Zapdos, I believe, gets Tailwind. Uh, I, I don't think there's some more. Zapdos does get Tailwind. It's also very strong. It's pretty defensive. It does have access to Roost in this format. And Disquake with Ursaluna. Yep. Yeah. Because okay. Ursaluna's 50 uh, base speed, just because you often see it in Trick Room, doesn't mean it can't also function very well in Tailwind. Yeah. It's... And just in general, because I hit it with a close combat from a stab, and it lived. With no bulk. Yeah, it has 105 defense. It's yep. like really min maxed. <laughs> I also hit it with Hydro Pump and it lived. That That's more impressive, honestly. Well, in its defense, the uh, Pokemon hit with Hydro Pump was Gastrodon. Ah. Uh, you see another Earthquake move? Yeah. Oh, we see three Definitely. Earthquake immune Pokemon in a row, two of which with Tailwind, um, and the other yeah. one with Trick Room. So there's a lot of being able to click Earthquake with support. A lot of this team is definitely supporting Ursaluna, but that's not to say that Zapdos isn't powerful. Yeah, it's like Charizard UK. with the uh, support Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, They've got a lot of controls for conditions. It's yeah, still insane to me that they decided to give Fish Harp an evolution this gen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely did not need it, but now with Eviolite, it's kind of insane. No, yeah, no, it's not insane. But they were a bit uh, worried about the fact that it was. Uh... There's Arbeliva, which. Yep. I've used in Trick Room, and it's very, very powerful. Um, yeah, I believe it's, 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 it's very strong. This, they've, uh, but it's kind of interesting that they have the sort of this overlap here. 
the problem is, uh, like, you know, normally be like, oh, and then you struggle to break through a Pokemon, like, insert Pokemon here. Except you don't really, because Ursaloon still just KOs most steels and rocks with Facade, and then it's just a question of can you KO the ghost type, which the answer is probably yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's not uh, really much of a loss from that overlap. Um, and they're very good into fighting, even if they have picked up these three sort of fighting weeks. Oh yeah, they have Zapdos and Yuxi. Their and, and, and there's Bisharp. Yeah. Just super ruthless fighting. Samurai's uh, the Bishop check. Uh, not Bishop, sorry, Ishifu check. It's got uh, um, yes. Shell Armor. Oh, I actually. Yeah, that's not something I would think of. <laughs> you tear into a fighting resist, and then you functionally also resist the other stab. And I believe it gets Sacred Sword. I don't know what it gets. Through. Does it get Grass on or something? I don't. I don't know. You can probably just. Hit. I think it, it also could it. probably just click a Water move into Dark Shifu. <laughs> yeah, um, that's why I said you'd probably choose a neutral move though. Yeah. Probably like a special Water slash. move. Did uh, you, I think you're no. right. I think it does get Air Slash. <laughs> it it does get Air Slash. You Terra flying with this. Yeah, it's over. It's Jova. Um, you know. Uh, Boca Raton Belly Bolt's more like Boca Raton Belly Knot. <laughs> I'll be here all week. Uh, so, Squawk! Squawk and Belly. So Intimidate's pretty good. Yeah, That's and true. Intimidate. I don't know what else it does. Damn. Uh, <laughs> it's a slower tail setter really... than their other two. Yeah, yeah. It's another, it's another normal type. <laughs> it's pure flying? No, it's normal flying. I said it's another normal oh. type. Oh, that's not, that's my bad. It's okay. Oh yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's nine a.m. We'll pretend it's nine a.m. for you as well, and that should make you feel better. Um, so Shellos is really good. Yeah, 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 yeah. The storm drain. I I saw it. It was it was insane last season. It had some uh, very very strong showings. We 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 are very scared of Shellos in this house. Uh, I'm not gonna uh, say. Yeah. I, I I cannot confirm whether or not Shellos is holding me at gunpoint right now, um, but <laughs> you know I I do feel can uh, forced to say uh, East Coast, um, and the Meowth exists. I don't think it will come to more than one game. So it, it has fake out. Mm, yes. Also and some ninety speed. Sash. Yep. If only they didn't already have a million other Pokemon in that ninety speed range, not like nine to one hundred. Kane has technician, so that 35 attack fake out is uh, now 60 base power. Yeah, but it's not stabbed like with regular Meowth. So clearly, they need yeah. another normal type. That was the problem. So I feel like this team seems kind of top heavy. Oh yeah, for sure. Ursa Luna is coming like every match. I think Ursa Luna, Sableye, and Zapdos are coming so frequently. Yeah, Uxie is coming to most. I feel like Arbolivia yeah. is coming to a decent amount. I think Uxie and Arbolivia are, are kind of like a mode together, and maybe they both stay on the bench sometimes. Then like Charizard, Bishop, yeah. Samurai is the other three. Maybe, maybe Shellos if there's like a particularly scary water thing. Um, I don't know when Squawk or Meowth are coming. And yeah, I, no. I do feel like Arbolivia stays Squawk on the bench. Billy Sometimes. Like, I could see if you just need to set up Tailwind, but, like, they already have better Tailwind setters. Yeah. So I would say this team is also very mid-range. Um, Trick Room is a very mid-range comp. Tailwind is a little bit more tempo weak because it has one less turn. Uh, and you kind of explode on that turn as well. <sighs> Do they only have one Trick Room setter in Uxie, right? Yeah. Hmm. Uh -huh. Um, but yeah, I think, so yeah, Bishop is to punish Intimidates. Yeah, for sure. So. Uh, yeah, and I would say um, a bit towards tempo, but pretty mid-range heavy. And very, very top-heavy. Yeah, 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 for sure. Top-heavy. Once once it gets going, it's gonna... Yeah. It, it, it will generally take a turn to set up, which, you know, is cool. generally the case but with yeah. Guts anyways. Uh, and then, but then once it's in that position, it's very scary. So the Grove City Jigglers. isn't that the guy that um, 
isn't that the guy that uh, Sheograph turns into in the Shattered Isles DLC for um, Oblivion? I have no idea what you just said, so sure. Yeah, the um... Yeah, the, the Jigglyth. Oh yeah, Jiggle. Yeah. Um... Alright. So, Sneasler. So there's, uh, there's Sneasler. Sneasler's funny. It, 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 you, you click acrobatics. Evil... Yeah, Are you about to say the evil off. Weavile? Isn't it less evil than Weavile? No, just the, the move Dire Claws. Oh, yes, yes. Evil. Dire Claws is a very fair and balanced move. I personally think they should uh, sure. give it to more Pokemon. Um, Chrysalea is a Pokemon that's in the format. Uh, this is the, uh, you know... <laughs> uh, it's an interesting combination with Sneasler. Um, so Sneasler's Unburdened is like one of its big selling points. Uh, because it then becomes absurdly fast with that 130 attack and then the ability to put your Pokemon to sleep even if they're in Tailwind. Yeah, yeah. 120 base speed. Um, and it does have access to Fake Out and Poison Punch. I think these abilities... Yeah, it's missing Unburden. I'm not sure why. Oh, yeah, it is. I noticed that Enamorous didn't have any abilities in there, so I don't know if all the okay. two ones... Might be from when they were like the uh, the data mine things from his wave, where they all had like one ability, but then most of the time it was wrong. Um, yeah, Cresselia, incredibly bulky. It, it, it plays towards a long game very well, as well as making it sort of like you know, it's a trick room setter that sets trick rooms two or three times in in a series. Though I don't think it does trick room much on this team. Uh -oh. No, definitely not. Zora, Kasui, Sneasler, plenty good. And uh, Taurus so as well, very fast. Espeon quite fast. I think Sneasler and like Zor are very tempo, but like with the Cresselia and like the more screens, well, I feel like it's seed leaning. Sneasler's um, grassy seed to get on burden. Uh, acrobatics off. Um, that makes sense. I was, yeah. River of Room is kind of like mid rangey sort of Pokemon. You can run like a defensive coal, or you can click Aqua Jet. <laughs> yeah. Does he have Aqua Jet? Or Taurus. Oh, Taurus Aqua. The, the invisible Taurus. Picture didn't load. It was... <laughs> yeah, the, the Taurus forms don't load. And I think there's another Pokemon that has forms that don't load for some reason. Um, Rotom Spin. Discquake. Yeah, that's... And it's the only Discquake that covers... Well, besides the Kilowatt one. Um, but we'll just pretend that isn't true. Also, the Zapdos one. It's the only one that uh, still works when uh, Weezing, who isn't in the game, is on field with neutralizing gas. Yeah. Also, you could run ability shield, but you know. Yeah, yeah. There may be uh, multiple other options, but we'll pretend that Rotom Spin is good. You can click um, Terra Flying Terra Blast. That's how bad S slash is. <laughs> Can't do that. Uh, S slash does hit. Grass types, which resist ground electric, which is, yeah, it's fine. It's not a bad option. Um, is there. Hmm? Is there like a giant. Is there a reason for Espeon? Like, I don't know. Just it's a fast offensive Pokemon. It fits with the general feeling of a lot of it. It's something that Zoroark doesn't mind disguising as. I guess, Though I guess yeah. if they, you click Sucker, that's not true. <laughs> what does Zoroark disguise as, as this, on this team? Maybe Cresselia? I was but then you get that that moved through. again. Like, um, I was like, maybe Sneasler, but that's kind of... Uh, but anything, any move that hits Sneasler is neutral into you, right? Because it resists fighting, and then it's neutral to normal. So then what, they're hitting yeah. with a bug or a poison? It resists those as well. Um, I mean, I'll be interested to see what Bone does with Zoroark. Bone loves doing weird things with weird Pokemon. Uh, I definitely want to watch this space on this one. Um, I think this team is very wide. I kind of expect everything oh, yeah. to come. <laughs> and everything to stay on the bench. Like, they're all kind of weird modular Pokemon. I, I think if anything comes every week, it's probably Cresselia. Yeah. Sneasler, I can see coming a decent amount, but like, yeah. if he's 
it, it might just like come as the six. Well, it, it like might. runs. It does have like a out. four. Uh, and then in terms of tempo, this team feels indexed very heavily on tempo, with the sole exception of Rosalia. And then what? Maybe Thwacky? No, not really. I guess like, you know, if you're at Thwacky, you could pop like Sword Stance on it. It'll do okay with um, Lunar Blessing support. You can run like a high Iron Defense Body Press Coal. Um, <laughs> or Don Fan. <laughs> or a Bulk Up Body Press uh, Taurus. But I feel like, yeah, this team dex indexes pretty heavily on tempo. Which yeah, is weird, pretty wide and pretty tempo. Because it has like Taurus is normally like the tempo mon on a late game team. Um, because it, it has access to Intimidate and then like Raging Bull uh, and and such. Yeah, Raging Bull is definitely pretty useful for this team. Um, and yeah, like Morgrim is also yeah. like a Pokemon that enables other Pokemon to go into long games, but it itself does not go into long games particularly well due to its frailty. Yeah, but then like two new two neutral hits and it's dead <laughs> yeah I mean like you know if you're running Eviolite with not screens one. you're not playing into the late game because you aren't, aren't likely and then if you are, aren't running Eviolite then screens aren't as strong as Eviolite um, so the New York Ninetales speaking of <laughs> so this is the team that scares me the most and I'm very glad that it wound up in the other of our two sets of Earth divisions Grimmsnarl, Spectrier are my two most used Pokemon in Draft League, uh, VGC Draft League. <laughs> I used them all the time last gen, and you know, if you saw my last season, I used a lot of Grimmsnarl as well. Uh, Mouse is terrifying, the Quack is terrifying, Articuno is really good, Copperaja is one of the best like pocket uh, trick room abuses in the format. Eel, absolute nightmare last season. Mudbrain, I got destroyed by Eel last season. Eel is, Eel is a uh, like, both of Eel and Electric, to a lesser degree, are really hard to deal with. You slap a clear amulet on Electros, and it just wins so many games. Um, it's so surprising. So I just so. did not... I had a game in a previous, um, in a different league, the WPG, where I ran Scarf Eel with, um, Terra Ground, uh, Earthquake, uh, um, Dragonite, and the Eel beat a covert cloak salamence <laughs> who was specifically meant to be immune to discharge uh like you can do whatever the hell you want with eel and it's it's like you're just yeah 50 speeds pretty, pretty pretty cool. so is there any kind of just good because of competitives and good special attack it's also got tailwind and trick room it's got a stab psychic uh -huh. move that freezes opponents um it's got recovery like it's it has it has a, a legendary base stat total with a good typing and good move pool. There's not really much to write home about in terms of like general criticisms for Articuno. It's always been pretty good. Um, obviously, it's slightly less explosive in term than it was last gen with um, Dynamax, but that's true for every flying yeah. type. <laughs> yeah, um, the Sorb Suck. It's a Pokemon. Slowpoke is actually a pretty reasonable secondary trick room setter. Yeah, it, it can do can do decent stuff. It's like 15 speed. It's quite fast. Slowpoke has the uh, the funny Serene Grace headbutt. You know what Sorb Suck used to have? Um, Serene uh, Grace Nature Power? Or is it Secret Power? Oh. Secret Power? Which, bar, yeah. in grassy terrain, was a 60% chance to sleep opposing Pokemon. That's... That's really mean. That's that's pretty great. Yeah, I mean, it, it was good. <laughs> yeah, obviously, it never saw play in singles, because a 60% chance to sleep... Uh, you can only, like, use sleep flaws. But, yeah. Um, and they didn't see play in VGC, because there's no low-tier VGC. <laughs> but I played some, like, um, uh, gym leader tours where that was a pretty, like, not unusual thing to see on, like, a grassy, uh, a grass, uh, gym leader team in Gen 7. Uh, Karakol is a Pokemon. It's pretty good. Uh, it's got Wisp. It's got, like, a decent attack stat at 60 yeah. with, with, with rocks, and it's quite bulky with 80, 90, 70, and EVL light. Yeah. Um, doesn't have body press like it's dad. Sadly. 
interested in No, that, I think it would be terrifying if it had body press. <laughs> yeah. Um, this team seems pretty reasonably wide. I can see all of these Pokemon it's coming. It's pretty... Yeah. I can see all of them sitting on the bench, except maybe Spec. I think you need a really yeah. bad matchup to put Spec on the bench, but that's like... Watch. Now, if uh, you know, if we see later this game that th these six Pokemon came to every single game, I would not be surprised. <laughs> huh, you know. Oh yeah, no, that's <laughs> the top end of this uh, team is very good, but the bottom end of this team is also very good. <laughs> um, so just yeah, to be clear, uh, this team is terrifying, and I hate it. Uh, I actually really love it. I, if I had this team, I would feel better about myself than with my current team. Um, <laughs> so, uh, in terms of tempo and long game, I'd say this team index is a little bit on tempo, but like very wide. Best screen sitter in the format. And this Pokemon is the yes, best tempo screen. Pokemon, the best mid range Pokemon, and the best long game Pokemon for like any team that wants a fast <laughs> Pokemon. Because you run like a bulky Wisp Snarl, uh, maybe maybe Calm Mind, but maybe you don't even bother with that. Um, you know, I've run, I ran an Assault Vest version of this with Phantom Force. Uh, because Phantom Force is protect in some conditions and that was like really good in Dynamax meta being able to make them burn a Dynamax move into Phantom Force um yeah you know <laughs> it was like it, it has like the least amount of moves that can be used in the most ways I don't know how to say that it, it has a very uh, shallow move pool but all of those moves are insane yeah yeah for also sure. it's got Draining Kiss this gen and Terror Blast you can just you can just kill everything yeah, you can just, like, Terra Fairy, and there's nothing. You, there's nothing anyone can do. I mean, you click Fake Tears with Grand... I mean, there's um, there's one Pokemon. Uh, unfortunately, we made it 17 points for some reason. Someone picked it up. But Garganakal's ability makes it resist Ghost. It's the only Spectria check. Also, yeah. it learns Mud Shot, so... If you tear into any type that resists Fairy, um, you, are still, you are weak to ground. But hey, on paper, <laughs> I really like Spectre. It's quite, it's quite, it's it's a, it's a very fun Pokemon. It, you know, Life Orb sets are just as fun as like the fully defensive sets, and they make your opponent have to make absurdly different decisions every game. And Max and Terra, I think, both work for it in a very similar way, where having that option to switch to just doing a lot of damage with Shadow Ball can be strong like you know if you aren't running terror blast you may just run terror ghost on this because it will make your opponent you know there, there will be a game where that gets a ko and then you immediately win because of grimnay yeah yeah plus one spectre error that's like terror ghost just spamming shadow ball is not something you yeah. can really it, deal even, with even like uninvest that's terrifying not to, not to mention hex with um t-wave support from grimsnarl and eel and then um, freeze from Articuno Galar. You know, it's not bad. Yeah. And Wisp from itself, of course. <laughs> so, uh, Jay Ballester and the Mallorca Mortals. Right. On a scale well, of one to team, this is a team. There's Annihilate, which is, I don't think, as good as it's. It's not really still pretty good. Like, yeah, and Klufki's a it's nice small. monster. And, and Flinch. Um, I like just learned earlier today... So I would that say that this is Moltres. the best Pokemon on the team. <laughs> Sorry, what did you just learn about Moltres? That the Fiery Wrath is both Pokemon on the field. I didn't know that. Wow, you definitely did not ever touch last gen VGC. Nope. It was everywhere. I, I, I played it early. Uh, right. then yeah. I it was either the things. second DLC, I think, that Moltres got locked in. I, I played so much first DLC. Yeah, because the first one introduced Regieleki and Regitrago, did it? Or was it just Oshifu? No, that was, that was also the second. Okay, <laughs> just Oshifu. First one was just, first one was just Oshifu. And it gave Rillaboom Grassy Train. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. And I think it gave Charizard Solar Power, because it made it so that you could Gigantamax um, anything but Gigantamax Super. You didn't have yeah. to be a Pokemon that was bred to be a Gigantamax Pokemon. Which was so annoying. Early Asia. Early... Yeah, I mean, I thought uh, it was an okay restriction. The fact that people were, like, cheating and using 
solar power um, Charizards was a bit 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 dodged, but it happens. Um, Iron Bunnity is the best Pokemon on this team, and I believe it's still very good. Yeah, Moltres I'm is very surprised good. Why is he was able? He was just still there like fifth round. I think it was priced pretty well. Um, yeah, I think that's why. I think the fact that we're seeing uh, like a lot of really good Pokemon that. You know, if it was like, oh, this is an 18 point, our most expensive Pokemon, um, go into later rounds. I think that's a sign that we did well in terms of making interesting decision making. Because, uh, like, I considered getting Iron Bundle round one. I was considering getting an Iron round one, aren't you? I think Jay was the pick immediately after me. Um, they dropped uh, Hiswayan Samurott for Electrode immediately after sniping me on Hiswayan Samurott, which is probably. The, the thing that I have most disliked in drafts in the history of my life. Um, but it's got Core of Lost. That's a that, that that's that's the same as it's you know. Fun move. Fun, funny high number. High number indeed. Uh, Monsdale's really good. I like this this team is mostly just good Pokemon. Does Klefki get Swigo? Do you know? Uh, I can check. I think it might. Don't trust. Me. Uh, no, only in Gen 7 or earlier. So, there's no prankster swagger for, um, Mudsdale, like with Trick Room from Klefki, but Slowbro may learn it, oh, or yeah. something else may, I'm not sure. This is out of date, they dropped Crocolore, Slowbro, and Pikachu for Delphox and two other Pokemon. Oh yeah, I saw the thing drop Pikachu, I just saw people talking about it. Um... I, obviously they're in my div, so I looked at that to consider whether I was looking at it. Delphox, Toxicroak, and Zorua, regular. Um, Toxicroak is definitely an improvement for this team. Delphox is yeah, sure. a side grade. Um, Klefki's a good Trick Room setter. I don't know if Klefki Delphox is pretty good Trick Room, but I guess both these Pokemon are weak to ground, so that might be a general concern with either of those comps. Toxicroak is like a good fake-out pressure mon. Um, it, it also has some relatively powerful like CCs and For sure. things like that. Is this team weak to Psychic? So it's got these two Psychic. No, it's got Delpox now as well. Yeah, that's probably fine. That's like... Um, Masquerade's okay. It's got Intimidate and Tailwind. They can generally come to, to like one or two games a, a season and do something. It's got Struggle Bug as well. It's got uh, like a really interesting set of moves and um, like terrible stats with that uh, 100 special attack 82 speed ah sorry 80 speed not 82 yeah, it's 82 special defense um, but yeah I think that the main Pokemon on this team are these ones with Psychozar is big sport Pokemon Toxicroak is a support Pokemon um, Delphox maybe is an offensive piece it's definitely not bad um, hey, Psychozar is a rain setter Psychozar is a pretty good rain setter for Moltres yeah. Not for Thunder Electrode. I think Electrode is probably the main setter. Also, Iron Bottle. <laughs> Electrode sets rain for both of these Pokemon. Yeah. Secretly an Since amazing Pikachu rain. Pikachu no longer for Thunder. I guess Electrode will just have to click Thunder itself. Oh, yeah, I think it seems pretty. Pretty wide now. It's, I think this team was a lot like less wide when it had Crocodile. Yeah, especially with the... Crocodile was fine. We yeah, saw it wide. be okay. But, um... Not like a game-to-game -game performer. More like a Pokemon, which is a strong tech piece. So I'd say this team is I pretty... I think maybe as wide as, like, Belly Bolt. Belly Bolt team, maybe. Yeah, right around there. Uh, and then... And, uh, how tempo is this? Uh, well, this is one of the best long-game Pokemon in the format. This is one of the best long-game Pokemon in the format. This Pokemon works well in tempo and in mid-range. Uh, this Pokemon is pretty good in tempo and mid-range. Uh, Delphox probably puts you more towards like a, a tempo-ish bit on the mid-range scale with Trick Room. Um, I think it's kind of in the middle. Yeah. I'm fine with not moving it from there. <laughs> well, yeah, no, uh, I'd say it leans, it leans a little bit towards that long game. Like, you know, yeah. if an island is not an clicking final gambit, it's probably clicking Rage Fist, right? Yeah. Both of these Pokemon can do that immediate damage, but have such good inevitability from Berserk and Rage Fist. Quite a, quite a, quite a yeah, spooky team. Um, speaking of spooky, um, I do hopefully will have a video uh, with Kanor coming out.
talking. Actually, I don't know if anyone else that we've talked about so far are Pokemon the people that I have videos planned with. They actually aren't. <laughs> okay, um, so Kanor, and I will have a video talking about um, these sort of like commitment comps. So this is what I would call a special offense team in the like, you know, Gen 3 OU sort of team composition. Yeah, where Chi Yu lowers special defense and the other Pokemon take advantage of that. Yeah. Like, Pachirisu becomes like a reasonable offensive threat with the Chi Yu support. Um, <laughs> wish I was joking. Uh, and then, like, Lucario become, goes from a Pokemon which is a very strong special attack after some setup to something which is more capable of getting those one hit KOs with Vacuum Wave uh, on, like, fairly yeah. fast Pokemon. Um, and certainly <laughs> to getting one hit KOs with the Flash Cannon or Focus Blast. Unless the Focus Blast is hitting Ursula with Bulletproof. Because it's immune to that, it's bulletproof. Yeah, I. I, I. <laughs> yep. Um, you just didn't say anything, so. <laughs> I'm feeling dead air. Um, Trudel's got Sun, which is very good for both of these Pokemon. Yeah, definitely. Lovan also has Sun. <laughs> These Pokemon are all, like, yeah, Wordier is another Pokemon which I think is normally not the most scary offensive threat, but becomes, like, a real, like, you know, really uh, capable of one-hit killing most Pokemon that are weak to its stab, and two-hit killing most Pokemon which are neutral to it with that GU support. Yeah, definitely. And then Landorus. And, I mean, getting into Neuvern Pokemon. only, like, Neuvern also For is sure. super threatening to you. Yeah, like, you, you, you slap a life orb on Neuvern. It's Jofa. Uh, on the other hand, Finian, Ilan's Tailwind, but so does Neuvern. So why would you run Finian with Tailwind? Um, I don't think you're weak enough to need Storm Train. I think two Finian water weaknesses. Just run Sun. Yeah, it does, but um, Neuvern runs Tailwind. Grookey. It does fake out. There may be a matchup where, like, you want a grassy terrain boost for, like, energy ball. Because that is stronger 1.3x than the 1.25 from Chiyu. That, I think, is the main I'm, circumstance in which you'd see Grookey coming in. I don't know, that might help against, like, an Earthquake spam team. I don't really know. Just click Terra on this Pokemon, and then you don't die to Earthquake. You've got Intimidate support, you've got two really good ground Fair. immunities. Hell, Terra normal E speed and then KO there. <laughs> KO there, quick <laughs> Pokemon. And Bronzor is got Trick Room. It, it, it might it might see play one game. Um, I would say this is a very top heavy team. Definitely, definitely. It's got I mean, these. The last these four two, are LC mods. These three Pokemon are the best. <laughs> and then Lando is probably okay. No one's probably okay. Lucario is a pretty reasonable see, one. Like, I, some weird ear attacks from this team. This is the team. <laughs> These three Pokemon uh, will well, dominate every game. You'll never see a fourth. It's my prediction. It's not actually my prediction, but that, that's my prediction. I mean, Sun, I have been screwed Sun over East by Encore many times. Oh yeah, yeah, Encore as well. Um, but Trudel is such a such a good um, manual weather setter. Yeah. So I think this team is pretty top heavy. Yeah, it's fairly top heavy. Like it's and got a I number also... of Pokemon that kind of f facilitate like it'll oscillate around that, but I kind of expect this um these three to come most games. Yeah, definitely. I keep forgetting this... oh it's the Grafton Gangars. Um so I'd say this is about where it is in top heavy, maybe a little bit more on this side. And then uh yeah, tempo, 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 tempo. Very, very highly tempo. <laughs> Yeah. The least tempo we play this game, this team seems like to me like it would make. Like, I don't really expect Patrice to follow me for a setup. Uh, it might be a sub on Flutamine, it might be Tailwind, uh, or, you know, maybe a setup move on Lucario once. Uh, maybe Weather for sure. Or, or Noivern. But that, that's really about it. I don't expect this team to be, like, trying to get three Calm Minds up with Landorus because then you one hit KO their Grass type with Earth Power or something. No, just Fluttermane and Chiyu will win most games, honestly. Absolutely. Or a lot of them. So, we go to across the pond. Oh, we, uh, we, take a, we take a swim around the Cape and uh, wind up in uh, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. 
Uh, and so this is a team. This is Big Rilla Beezy. This is Tauros. Slow King. That's 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 a that's I, a set of three Pokemon. I was pretty surprised when I saw Rilla go round one. That's pretty good. I wasn't shocked. It seems like a mon that you can definitely take round one if you want to, like, you know, oh, here's a Pokemon I don't want to be with Earthquake. Here's another Pokemon I don't want to be with Earthquake. Here's another Pokemon I don't want to be with Earthquake. Look, that's not one. Um, How many? Was it at? What's right? Uh, How many points? 19? I don't know. It's pretty, yeah, it seems pretty reasonable for the price that it was at. Uh, but what you mean? It has a lot of... Rotombo. I've got Powered up in grass terrain. 18. So yes, no, it's, it's, it's probably cheaper than it should have been. Um, Rotom mode doesn't better from grassy terrain as levitate. That, yeah, yeah. Unless you're planning on that. using Grafai Doodle, I suppose. <laughs> I wasn't it's joking, but okay. <laughs> Palisant has energy ball. Also, they have Grafai Slaking, which can be very uh, difficult, but I wonder if it's less good in the uh, the more highly optimized current format. I, it definitely can do some things. Yeah, it can. It can. Like, it was pretty, it was pretty spooky last season, um, though I wonder if it is less now that we've got, like, Landorus and stuff in the format. Uh, that, that's all I, I wonder. Taurus is, like, the, the Rillaboom Taurus lead. Very, very difficult to not concede a KO turn one. Like, both of those Pokemon yeah. are capable of getting Okos into neutral. It's like a Life Orb or a Terra Clear Amulet on Tauros, and then, like, just hitting Woodhammer with the ability boost or Rillaboom. Uh, this team has a lot of tempo, um, though it does have some pretty good late game in Gargoggle in, like, a uh, recovery based Palisand set. Slack off Slaking. Um, yeah, it's looking good. Last a while. And then Driplim is also pretty good at uh, blunting a lot of things, but it's also got that, obviously, the fast tailwind. Uh, Sloking is, is, is like one of those Trick Room setters that I think it, you know, like Chris Elliott said, Trick Room three times a game. I'd say it's Sloking maybe sets it twice a game, whereas Master it might may set it once. Um, and then Rotom Mo is probably one of the more mid rangey sort of uh, things as well. So I'd say this team is... How wide did we say this team was? Very, very uh, wide. <laughs> yeah, it's very wide. Every single one. We expect Rillaboom to come most games, but that's about it. Tauros will come. Tauros will probably come to a lot of games, but I could see it. I could see it having like a five game, four game season. It's very yeah. good though. It's just that everything else is really good. I think this team took advantage of their points incredibly well. What, what's the worst Pokemon on this team? Bombardier? Bombardier is like super bulky. Um, and then it's got 103 like attack here. with three stab types. It's not super bulky, but it's above average bulk and its typing is very good in the same way that it is for Glare and Moltres. You know, it's no 70, 61, 61 like Honshkro. Uh And then what? Uh, so we think it's like a bit we think it's pretty tempo-y but then it's also got like a really good late game I'm just going to put it here because then it's not as hidden by Sandsteam yeah okay Enamorous Division on to the Enamorous Division oh I try and all gigs top of the morning to a ladder it's in a cairn throw it to three of them I think it's Ryan O Giggs, not Ryan O Giggs, but yeah. Oh yeah, do you want to run us through this team? <laughs> sure. Uh, Thunder's Great Tusk is just a great combo, and Flosion uh, has the... Uh, does normal type Flosion get Nasty Bullet? I have no idea. I think so. I think the other one gets it as well. I, I might be wrong. Um... I'm nearly certain Hisuian does. I just don't remember if this one does. Um, so it doesn't. And the Hisuian one also doesn't. We were wrong and we apologize. Um, that said, I blame Pygo. 
Um, uh, uh, it was this one. Uh, Orthworm. Orthworm Stantler is a really interesting combination of two Pokemon that are very weak to fighting and very physically defensive, but don't take special moves uh, particularly well. To have with Great Tusk, which is a Pokemon that doesn't take special moves particularly well. And then Leafeon, which is another Pokemon with a very high defense stat and very low special defense stat. But hey, at least Gudra's got high special defense. Yeah, Gudra balances out this new. Oh, also Dark Spot. <laughs> and Scyther. <laughs> and Quillfish. <laughs> so this team is very happy that Kanor is in the other division, I think. For sure. Uh, Thunder's Great Tusk is just, like, such a good combo. Yeah, it's, it's really terrifying lead. As well as, like, I think Thunderous is coming to nearly, if not all, games. Okay. I didn't find that when I had Thunderous in uh, Daddy Plan Part 2, which was, like, the equivalent of, like, a low-tier league. <laughs> um, but it's okay. It's not, it's not a bad Pokemon by any means. Um, I don't know if it's coming right, to every game. I don't know if anything's coming to every game except maybe Great Tusk. It's, it's a wide team. Quillfish is Sui, has Intimidate, and... It's pretty bulky. Bolt, like, I mean, Quillfish was a fully evolved Pokemon that saw some play. And it's weak. It, it, this has more attack, and it's got Eviol Light. And a better typing. Better typing, too. Or, a, not a better offensive typing, but a, a better defensive typing. No, they're both good defensive typings. They're both good typings. Scyther has Tailwind, I just don't think about it. Scyther has Tailwind, ever. and, um, <laughs> like, it's pretty strong with the Technician. I, I think it's very good, um, Scyther. That 110 yeah. attack is I, I combined with 70, 80, 80 defenses. I think it's okay, I just am not sure if it comes too much. The great thing about it is that, you know, Scyther is only weak to, like, what, like, Ice, Icy Wind with, with Great Tusk. I'm, I'm just really not sure what a lot of this team... I'd be really interested to see what Rhino Geeks does with this team, because I think outside of this combination, a lot of what the rest of the team is supposed to do is very difficult to see. Like, you're clicking Sunny Dave um, for leaving on Typhlosion with Thunderous. Are, are you on, you know, what, what's the Trick Room uh, mode looking like? Uh, is it like Great Tusk and then like an offensive Orthworm? Is it that like, uh, like a Life Orb Gudra? I'd be really interested to see what they do, because they have a lot of interesting pieces, and I don't necessarily yeah. see how they fit together here. Uh, also, you can uh, Lava Plume, Dark Spawn. Yeah, that. That's the other, like, uh, combo body piece. Press. Uh, there's also Great Tusk, EQ, and an Orthworm. Yeah, I don't yeah, know if you know yeah. that off. Earth Age is pretty good. Point. Though I, I, feel, I, I guess my concern there is that they just click, like, two spread special moves, and then both of them faint. Yeah, that that is the bad part of it. So... I'd say this is a pretty wide team. Um, definitely like one of the widest we've seen. I don't know if that's just me. But yeah, I don't it's know if it's wide. one of the widest we've seen. I think it's pretty one. around like where Jay's team and the Bulk of Tom Belly Bolts is. Where we kind of expect Thunderous and Great Tusk to come a lot. Alright. Uh, maybe like, like two and a half ish months. And then. It has a lot of late game mods. Like, you know, Thunderous is a mod that. Sorry, Th Thunderous is a mod which specs really well into a late game sort of push. Um. You know, Orthworm, Stantler are very heavily late game support. Mons Gudra functions pretty well in a um, mid range game, but really well in the late game as well with that life due. Um, you know, Darkspawn is a Pokemon that tries to thrive off inevitability if you do do it with Typhlosion. Uh, you know, Basque Legion is a Pokemon with true late last respects. So, oh, we didn't talk about Basque Legion. This Pokemon's really good. Um, it can brain dance with this as well, or this can tail it or rain dance for it. Very high special attack with um okay hundred special attack but with adaptability a nine to attack with um last respects definitely a scary Pokemon in a late game um I'd say this is one of our longer game teams it's this, long this, game yeah this, these three it, are very it can high in game tempo fairly surely I believe like the, these but... three are like absurdly high tempo but everything else I think index is pretty reasonably towards a late game uh, except like basket as well. Oh my yeah, gosh, the Swiss I, I think combo. it would be like midway down on late game because it yeah. could go really long game, but yeah, as you yeah. noted, there's so many tempo. They they have Pokemon which are very good at fitting into tempo, but 
great late game pieces. The Jordan, your coach of the Virginia Viking Volts. Hey, Tingler. Tingler, man. <laughs> the best round one pick, followed by the worst round one. No. Um, I have absolutely no idea what Iron Valiant does for BGC. Uh, yeah, like, one of the times it clicked Calm Mind and then didn't die. I don't really... Iron Valiant does a lot of things okay, but mostly it's just a threat bubble, right? It's very, um... It's kind of, like, obnoxious to try and cover defensively. Alright. In singles, it's... a nightmare. But... Yeah, I would say it's probably the same here. I just don't respect it as much because of its general frailty. Um, but, I mean, it's got Tingaloo here. If it's living stuff after Carmine, it's probably living stuff next to Tingaloo. It's definitely living stuff after a Wisp from Ultrace. Um, you know, you've got a lot of uh, other forms of damage mitigation on this team. I think damage mitigation is a um, setting in which Iron Valiant thrives. It's really good at, you know, being that Sash Pokemon that gets a KO on turn one. But it's also pretty reasonable at being that, um, you know, tingloo It gets, like, wide guard, quick guard, I believe, so... Hmm. I don't know why I'm saying it. You probably know that. Uh, Sorry. Medicham. Does, does what Iron get Valiant? white guard? Iron Valiant gets white guard, right? Oh, yeah, it does, yeah. yeah. I think I said I know Iron Valiant. that that was its best move. I mean, it is a good move. <laughs> Iron Valiant and Medicham are. They get Trick Room, but like. Which I admit, uh, uh, mysterious also the trick too. It's, it's my bad. I think it does. I don't know. Anyway, hmm. just think Luke can do really good trick room, but I don't think anyone else. Swallow out and can do things. Don't do it. Yeah, Swallow, Swallow's fine. Um, Growlithe is pretty, pretty strong uh, and defensive as like one point. It is strong. Just rockhead, flare blitz, and head smash can do a lot of damage. You could also Absolutely. get wild charge, double edge. It gets a lot of moves that anyone can with it. But you can also just click rocks like 75 attack and stab is pretty strong. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'd say, and Mysterious is such a good trick room setter. And, and like, synergizes very well with like the Earthquake, Tingler. Um, those are really good yeah. uh, late game Pokemon. I, I'd say this team. It does fit really well into a late game, though it can also do. Like, you know, we've seen like Choice Man Tingler put in work in different uh, games and formats. Yeah, I ran Choice Man Tingler last season and then it destroyed somebody. I think it's destroyed like Sly season week one. It's pretty great. So I'd say this team indexes towards the long game more so than any of the other teams. Um, I'd say really only Iron Valiant doesn't necessarily love a late game. I think basically everything else does. Yeah, mid to late game. So it's fairly, yeah, it's fairly long game. I'd say it's a bit um, on the top heavy side, but it definitely has some width to it. Yeah, just it's never just like fairly to be on the bench. And you don't, I think you don't expect Dozer to be on the bench that much either. No, I, like, I see it coming across every game. You know, <laughs> these Pokemon I think come a lot. Um, I, I think maybe the issue is more that some of the low tier options are not ones that well, come as much. Could mm. come like one time, but like I don't. See I, it. I think Growlithe probably comes about as much as Metachamp and Molten Swallow. Yeah. But you know, I obviously could eat my words. Um, Jordan is a uh, is uh, a good coach. Who he is very good at running uh, <laughs> these sorts of uh, like why long ish game mid range comps. Uh, Reggie Labs with Heaven, our uh, French connection. Reggie Drago, Arcanine, Murkrow, Zumril, Gothitelle, Imaginazone, Bramble Jast, Miss Magius, Jigs, which is the cost the same as Wigglypuff, the uh, Wigglytuff, by the way, or Mola and <laughs> Makalola. These Pokemon rhyme. Uh. Uh, so Goth. 
with a bunch of Pokemon that have very specific checks is pretty good, right? Yeah, definitely. Azumarill, Arcanine, Drago, um, and Primal Ghost all use it pretty well. Drago Goth is pretty scary if that manages to get a... It's a pretty strong offensive pair. Yeah, yeah, Pikachu I mean, yeah, you, you lead Goth and Drago. There are situations where you can get two KOs at lead. Yeah, <laughs> you, you wouldn't expect it to be a two-turn game, but maybe like a three-turn game where you, you know, punish them not leading their Drago check and get the, get those two KOs. Uh, and then you get Drago out, uh, and then, you know, have like Arcanine or Azumarill KO, or Muck KO there, um, the check. A lot of Pokemon. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of Pokemon, yes. I'm so, I'm so glad Regidrago is better this. It's not like it was bad last gen. Like, it, it wasn't bad in gen. It was I mean, just like... Uh, I think that it, it, it misses Dynamax. It was a really good Dynamax Pokemon. I thought it was really good last seat, last gen. Probably wouldn't have taken it round one, but it was it was it was definitely not not, not bad. And it's definitely not bad now. I mean, we saw it definitely have tournament performances last gen at the very least. Yeah. Um, um, Muck is funny. I think Ramgast is. Yeah, this team is very annoying to prepare against. I wonder if you ever run Shed Tail for this team. I I. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> Not shed tail, shed shell. Shed shell. Yeah, I know. I know what you meant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bramble gas ability is great. I feel like it, wind rider and infiltrator. Which is... The amount of times people have just spammed icy wind. Into like bramble gas and yeah, um, yeah. I see when just one. Uh, but obviously, great. you can also just get the attack boost with tailwind and tailwind. Yeah, with macro. Um, you know, if you're on covert cloak on on macro, it's pretty difficult for them to stop you getting that initial attack off with bramble gas. Does does a loma mola do anything in BGC? Well, if you had been watching the incredible. Uh, Pokemon A to Z, uh, you would have found that I think it was the only game that we won in the Aloma Mola regular Zoroark video. It was the one where we used Aloma Mola. Okay, well that's, that's my bad. I should have been watching. That's White God. <laughs> <laughs> so it's about as good as Iron Valiant. It doesn't that... die very much and it's got chilling water. It's okay. I think it has Icy Wind as well. But it, a long molar is fine. It, it was, what, three points? Two points? I don't think it's necessarily worth indexing particularly heavily on. Jigglypuff was also two points and it has friend guard. That's what it does. Um, I'd say this is... It's, a wide team. It's really I, wide. I expect everything to say on the bench at least one game a season. Like, yeah. I, I could see most of these Pokemon... Like, I could see none of these Pokemon having more than four games played. But I would expect probably Goth to have maybe like five or six. I can very easily see most of these teams sitting on the bench for half the season. Yeah, Arcanine and Goth seem like they have the highest. Yeah. Maybe that's just me. Maybe put it like here, and then... Uh, how tempo is this? This is some long game, but I think a lot of tempo. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think this team really mid-ranges. I think this team really only tempos on long games. Because no, you like the it Parish can, Trap, which is very It can go really slow. long games, but I feel like it can also just set Tailwind up and just... Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's got a lot of tempo. Or just leave Dragon and just Dragon Energy. Yeah, I think it's got a lot of tempo. I don't think it has a lot of long game. Oh, sorry, a lot of mid-range. I don't think it has a lot of mid-range. Like, yeah, Arcanine no, is a I... mid-rangey Pokemon. Azumarill is not. Regidrago is not. Murkrow can be, but generally isn't. Goth can do whatever the hell you want because shadow tag is <laughs> the only like is the best thing and fake out works on every mode magnuson can sort of mid-range without iron defense body press set but i don't think that is what you generally expect to see it doing Bramblecast really does either the offensive i'm going to get um i'm going to get like attack boosts or the late game i'm going to click strength sap and i'm going to wear you down over time <laughs> Miss Mag, I guess, can pretty mid-range with, like, a Wisp Hex sort of variant. 
Oh, yeah. was very much a late game on Jigglypuff. Maybe is mid range with wide guard if there's like a specific setup you Muckled. get with it and then helping hand. Friend guard, Muck can not do like mid range. Guard. What's right? Muck can do a uh, mid range. Does it still in refresh? I know a lot of Pokemon lost refresh I last I don't year. even know if refresh is in the game. Not refresh, not refresh. Recycle. Refresh is card, you're correct. Uh, it does not learn recycle. I think recycle was also removed from the game. It doesn't learn recycle. Yeah, it doesn't learn recycle. Is recycle Sadly. just gone? I thought um I thought Greed had learned it. No, 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 no. It's in the game. It's in the game? That's yeah. my bad. I guess so many so Greed many does not lost it. it. Just... Appleton does. Bronzong does. Klefki does, and Electrode does. Both of them. Yeah, Both because of them. you can't run it on Magnemite anymore. Trail C. Sad. Yes, that's true. Magnemite is not as good in Little Cup, but you said Magneton, who would be very good in Little Cup. I said Magneton? Ah, yeah, it's my opinion. <laughs> it's like, that would be that'd be a scary Pokemon to see in Little Cup, you know? <laughs> I was like, I don't Actually, think my Goofy no, is checking be... it anymore. I think it, I think it might have been banned from, like, NFE. I don't know if I'm just dreaming that. I would not be shocked. Um, but it was insane in NFE. Yeah, I think this team's um, pretty. I think I think we've put it in a pretty reasonable position. Um, so, yeah, pretty wide and pretty can do a decent amount of stuff. Yeah, so. I think that you kind of have like the curse rest sets with Muck, but the fact that you don't have a recycle means that you don't have that mid range as much. But it's still it's just strong, and you can still just do strong things with it. So, Rich Weave and the Anchorage Alakazams. So this team, uh, is very just, just, top just, just, for, just forfeit if you see a Spath Red team preview, you'll, you'll lose. I, I'm so sad that I didn't use a Spath Red as well as I could have last season. Well, how did three people have a Spath Red? <laughs> did you drop it? I had it last season. Last season, I thought Rich Weave and Sly did. Oh no, Sly had it the previous season, in season eight. That's what I'm confusing it with. Okay. Um, Espathra's dumb. Just just run uh, just run it, click the move that drops you their special defense by two stages, and then click it with the part of special crash. attacker. Oh, would, would you look at that? They have Scurvidian and Arcanine, who are both reasonable special attackers. Also, Diglett's funny. Primate is really good, though. Diglett is funny. Uh, Pichu is uh, not good. Pichu is Lightning Rod. That's not... Uh, lightning Rod and... A uh, forty attack fake out. That's all I'm saying. It it's no thirty five attack technician fake out, but you know. A Charmander. Charmander has very high special attack. I considered um. It does. Doing something with it at one point. Uh, so these Pokemon. I think come basically every game. I think. Maybe it's sometimes. Think, yeah, it's 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 scope. fairly top heavy, like really top heavy. Ditto is not a bad Pokemon, though. just a specific Pokemon, uh, and it's the yeah, Anchorage Alex Sam's. These are the top heavy yeah. teams. Um, she and Pow or Shifu Rapid is just such a scary combo, especially with like Cold Knight. I don't know. It's a lot of like tempo. That's... Arcanine, yeah. Yeah, very tempo. So Corviknight. Pretty top heavy. So Spathra is a mid range bond, and then Corviknight and Primeape can late game, but they can also fit into tempo pretty well. They can. And then um, Shin Power. The fact that you have to rapid strike the, the Primeape is not very good. <laughs> that Surging Strike, the Primeape, is not very good. Because that means you are limited to tearing into a type that resists water, which is what? Like Grass, Dragon, Water itself. Is there a type I'm missing? Uh. No? Yeah. I don't think. Um, so then Grass, you're either water. being weak to fairy, you're keeping up with this team's general electric weakness, or you're staying weak to flying, right? So uh, in terms of the water resist types, um, two of them are resisted by, uh, so like two of them take damage from them. Um, uh, whichever type you turn into, if it resists water, you'll share a weakness with Oshifu, is basically what it comes down to. And then it, yeah. it limits what you can take. Uh, so. Yeah, you know, maybe it's Scoville more often. Maybe we occasionally see a Ditto. But I think these five the upcoming basically every game. Definitely. So. Sucks, Mox. Yeah. 
the Toronto Maple Leaf Vannies. This is a new coach. They're, they're the um, coach I'm doing the other um, enamorous, the, the other alignment chart with. Ah. Uh -huh. Well, I'll have to watch it and see what they say about my team. Tempo. This team's a lot of tempo. Uh, yeah, for sure. I you set up trick room, tailwind, and I think King Gambit is coming like every game. I don't know if that. I might be wrong on that, but it just feels like. Which Pokemon stay on the bench in this team? Scrub generally. It sometimes has good matchups, but generally he's going to stay on the it's bench, especially for a Sun team. Stone Jewel you know, is funny, but not very good. Um, Bow Spot's okay. Persian. It's not very good. Persian's an okay sport Pokemon. I think this team has like a really it, wide fifth and sixth slot mon slot. But gosh, yeah, I feel like, like these four are coming so often. Yeah, for sure. Um, so it feels that's, pretty that's tough. That's like heavy. immediately what I look at on the team. Um, and then. I feel like Crocodile doesn't really fit into this team. I don't know. It has Intimidate, but like. This is quick. I, I guess with Orangaru tele Telepathy and yeah. Kilowatchful Discord. You can, you can do this, I, and then it, it, it doesn't hit, get hit by Discharge or Earthquake. Or Lava yeah. Plume. That took me. Yeah. Is that good? Who knows? Does Stone Journey get another ability besides Power Spot? No. I thought uh, it might no. have learned Telepathy. It's one of those mods. <laughs> uh, that aren't very good, and so you don't know what they do. Um, I mean, yeah, Stone Gen was okay. It's got high defense and body press. It's funny. It's got Scarf Rock Slide. That's for sure. It has 20 special defense. <laughs> you don't need the, you don't need Chiyu next to you to Oko that with <laughs> Vacuum Wave. It is this Great Tusk, like, to the max. Great Tusk is just better Stone Gen. Well, it doesn't have power spot, so how could it be? The fact that it's... power spot doesn't affect Stone Gen, I think, is what makes it less good. I think if it was affected by, by it, you could run Scarf and feel okay. Mm -hmm. Pretty reasonably, but like light screen and snarl don't do enough with that special defense unless you skimp on the attack and then you just don't do damage. Yeah. Uh, so purple rains, Damascus drift blimps. Do right. you want to take us through the team? Uh. So we have heat ran. Yeah. Uh, which is just. It was just heat waves, and I guess it has it has heavy slam. It's got flash cannon. It's got it, and, um, earth power. Does it get uh, power? Perb solar beam. It's not an uncommon move to see on it. There's lava plume. Ter I've seen terra blast. Uh, grass. Terra blast grass is a pretty lot. common. That's right. You don't need to run Gyarados. I was surprised that it went round two, but I don't like. It makes a lot of sense. Gyarados is. A I think it's really good. One. It was like not used at all. I feel like early this gen. Maybe yeah, the second flood of me got in the format. It was like on every team. In, in regulation, yeah. in regulation B and C, it's like a what top ten Pokemon in terms of tournament usage. For sure, it was on like every team. Uh, yeah, but I, I think but that yeah, I was it, it's, that it, it was a lot worse in the the first format because um, Meowth was everywhere and ignores it, and there was another Pokemon that um, had a really good matchup into it, which kind of died. I don't remember what it was. Um, but uh, it's the same way that Palafin was like really terrible in the first format because there were a bunch of Pokemon that were good that matched up really well into it and then they all disappeared completely the second Fluttermane came into the format because Fluttermane removed everything <laughs> Regulation B and C are just the Fluttermane formats like Fluttermane was on basically every top two team for most of the format until right at the end and even then, it like you had to be able to match up okay into Fluttermane to see usage. So a lot of those top tier Pokemon were no longer seeing usage because they just lost into Fluttermane. And they lost into other very good Pokemon in the format as well. But I think Fluttermane was kind of like the gatekeeper of the format. Yeah. Because you could just run it's, like, one of those. <laughs> it's like you're on Fluttermane on Trick Room, you're on Fluttermane on Perish Trap, you're on Fluttermane on like a physical offense. It's just yeah. I think it's one of the most Pokemon uh, So you got Roaring Moon, who's very good Tailwind Setter. It really does appreciate Intimidate because with its um low defense stat but high HP and high special defense, it is so hard to KO after an Intimidate. It is. Um, I, funny. 
slap purple rain to do a video. Kill win like breaking party. swipe snarl. Yeah. Like those are all good support. Breaking swipe is such a good move, which we didn't mention on the Cyclozar team, but Cyclozar does have it. We, we did not mention that. Yeah. Code scroll. Fast tail. I don't love having two booster energy mods that are both really good booster energy users because like booster energy acrobatics on this, and then this Pokemon becomes so bulky yes. with um booster energy. Booster energy defense. You, I think defense. you're kind of incentivized then to run like less defensive sets and more like speedy sets with screen tail yeah. by using booster energy, maybe like a light clay sort of um, thing. But then Raichu is also like a dual screen setter. It's interesting. I'll, I'll be interested to see what Rain does with this team. It's very, it's very um, good. And then like, you know, <laughs> oh, would you look at that? Knuckle stack, one of the most broken Pokemon in the format. Um, Next deck is pretty powerful. Soul Cure and Helping Hand beat so many teams. Uh, and then for Simeon and Brave. Brave Area Sui, I, I'm like super interested to watch because I feel like it can just go off one game. You click Esper Wing and, and it gets like, Speed Boost, and then you click Esper Wing and it gets another Speed Boost. And then, except it doesn't because you have Sheer Force. Uh, <laughs> it, it is a bit of a mix up, right? Um, if you're running into it's a team. It's so annoying that those cancel each other out. No, it's good, it right? Because it means that Esper Wing is an offense. Well, you just run Psychic instead of Esper Wing with Sheer Force. Um, but, like, Tinted Lens is a really good ability, and it's an as well yeah, with Esper Wing. Lens. And then. And Sheer Force. You can run Trick Room and just run Psychic, anyways, right? Or Sheer Force. <laughs> yeah. With or without Sheer, sheer Force. force. Um, but like if you run into a team who's got like say Rev of Room as their steel type, you may feel fine running um running Sheer Force and then just being like, okay, I'll just hit their psychic type with uh with a resisted move or like with air slash hurricane. I don't know yeah. what its flying moves are. <laughs> um I, air slash hurricane. That's all this team cares about breaking psychic types. It's really just the steel type that you're concerned with. Um, so I think yeah, I think Braveheart like, is very good on this team. I think Basimian is pretty good on this team. It, it does appreciate Defiant and like the Scarf close combat. It's also really good at removing Pokemon for this team. I feel like this is a, a really mid range mid range team. I don't yeah, know. absolutely. Heatran mid range, probably the best mid range Pokemon in the format besides Fluttermane. Oh. <laughs> Gyarados really good at mid range. Um, I guess this does kind of lack like a good hex abuser for like the Nuzzle Raichu, Thunder Wave Gyarados, um, Lava Plume slash Wisp yeah. Heatran. Uh, and maybe that is something that they could look into if they find themselves struggling at some point. But, like that would probably just be trying to find like a one pointer. Um, because I think you could probably find like a decent ghost type with Eviolite and Hex uh, in one point. Though I haven't specifically looked oh, for yeah. a ghost type because I already had a different ghost type. In fact, I had two. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of these I Pokemon. I got Basket Legion. Basket Legion, the one point Pokemon. That's not a one. I, that I did not mean that. I, so. No, I, I'm just, I'm just teasing. It's, it's all good. Uh, so I think Heatran comes every game, but I think everything else can sit on the bench pretty safely because the other Pokemon, like, what is the worst Pokemon in these nine? Brightu, Toadstool, Braviary. I feel like a lot of them have like really good mashups, and yeah, it's it's a very wide team. Uh, and then it's very wide it's down here, but it's pretty mid But it's late game is so good. <laughs> Heatran's a good late game. Gyarados really good late game. Knuckle Stack really good late game. Uh, and then Braviary can definitely do it, and Screen Tail can obviously click Parasol, which is really good at fleshing out late game sort of comps. <sighs> Tay and the South Texas Slowpokes. Do you want to take us through the team? Alright, so there's Dragonite. Yep, yep, there might the, be. Might Strider. be Dragonite. You never know. <laughs> okay. And 30 foot back. Yep, uh, pretty good. Tinkaton and the bird. The worst Tornadus. Uh, yeah, worse, and, but probably not as much worse as the price difference suggests. Yeah. Um, I, definitely better now that it's got the flying move that is 80 base power. Oh, sorry, 100 base power, 80 accuracy, it hits both targets. I think it was... It feels like it was tiered without the ability to get speed drops into both opposing Pokemon 
without even having to click talent. Yeah, I, it was. Yeah, I considered drafting this, it. This samurai is the most frustrating thing because Tay should not have this samurai. Um, <laughs> the electrode samurai. I don't know Tay's history. Super so... Oh, Tay uh, won I think three consecutive seasons. That that's pretty insane. Tay's a very good player, uh, but also the the electrode samurai trait. I match. I love Samurai Hisui, and I I think it might be my favorite Hisui one. I think it was pretty under tiered here, as was Serolech, as was um, Taunty. So, Tay has always been very good at finding Pokemon, which were a bit under tiered for the format. Also, they took Chestnut, which I was <laughs> hoping for. Uh, Tay took all of the Pokemon that I wanted. Am I just bad? Yeah, that's the reason. Right, that's fair. You should or am be I ashamed. good because Tay is good and taking the Pokemon that I wanted? Uh, no, it's the exact opposite reason. Also, I think we skipped Sandy Shocks. Uh, also, Farrow Draft stops your Pokemon from we, being we hit by uh, priority Sandy moves. And you never have to run ability Sandy shield. Sandy Shocks is actually... Because they have Tinkerton. Sorry, yeah, Sandy Shocks. Sandy Shocks is really good. I don't know if I go that far. I like it. Okay. I think it's okay. I think it's good. I don't know if it's really good. <laughs> I have it in okay, another league, ahead. and it is okay. But it sits on the bench a lot, and it sits as a six team, the six modern team a lot. It's probably better without any competition for booster energy, but I wonder if it is how much better. Um, Riolu is, is is under tier as well. I I, I yeah. So I I, I, coaching I think I do for both of these. The, Coaching's not in the format. I know, that's why I said it lost coaching. Yeah, it's got Hal. Ah, well, Hal, it's not, plus not. one attack to several Pokemon that really appreciate that, like, passive attack boost. And then Riolu also gets the attack boost off of its, um, you know, 70 attack close combat. Or Mark Bunch. It's a, it's and, like, you can like, that can actually be usable. Especially yep. a plus one. I mean, we've been seeing multiple Pokemon use Hal in, in like, tournament. So, being able to use it in draft is much li likely. Yeah. Right? Um, so... Uh, I think this team is, like, really, really good. But this team's know. pretty wide. They're... Oh, yeah, this team's really good. Like, that, there, there was never a dispute. Um, uh, yeah, they're multi-time tournament. I mean, this team can just do whatever the hell it wants. <laughs> it just sits here in mid-range because it's got very good tempo and very good late game. Denite is a mon that can go late game, mid range, both very, very easily. Tink just kind of sits on whatever team it wants. Um, I think maybe it struggles into a tempo game as just because you can only click Gigas on Hammer once in a row. Therefore, it prefers to go in yeah. a mid rangey sort of comp. But fake out still good. Taunty, absurdly good Pokemon. Uh, you can just use its offensive and uh, like defensive thing and just sit there for like a tempo we tailwind to deal damage with. Um, Windseer, or whatever the hell it's called. Um, Bleak Windstorm. Tornadoes does Bleak Windstorm, yeah. Sandseer... Is Lando. Sandseer something? Is Lando, yeah. They're all Storm. Then I forget what... Wild Bolt is and what? Springtide. Wild... Well, yeah. I remember Springtide, I was just trying to think of Wild I Bolt. I haven't used a Torn in this format, that's why I don't know. I also don't have, um... Uh, Arceus. Ice Goose is pretty okay. Um, the fact that it have functionally has like a, a kind of focus ash in Ice Face is sometimes cool. And Serilege is really good. I think that both of the people who were like strong anti Serilege advocates were just not correct. <laughs> Serilege is a really, really, really absurdly good Pokemon. Um, and whenever I like did mocks playing as either of those coaches, the Serilege did a lot of work. So I think it's, it just kind of sits where it is. It's really good. Um, Shogun's yeah, bites. Can go long. Hey, it's your team. Do you want to say its name? Uh, I did just. I did just, just pronounce it myself. Did you bit? Shogun's bites. It's und bites, which is breakfast yeah. in Dutch with Shelma. He's having breakfast. He's got pepper cook and some orange juice and pancakes. Nice. Um, I asked if the co the person who did my um, Shellgon, Bagon, and uh, 
Salamence logos would do a Roaring Moon one as well, but they're not doing logos anymore. Very sad. It's very, yeah, it's very sad. There's a Namorous. I... You? This one, is, it's like super versatile. I hope so. I, don't, I have no idea what it does. <laughs> I just know it has, a, like, I don't know. It just has, like, good moves and good stats. It's terrible blast if I want a flying stat. Yeah. That's 80 base power, which is an improvement on um, previous gents when it used to run 70 base power HP flying, and then 60 base power HP flying, and then you stop running HP flying. 135 stab moon blast is just good on its own, right? I feel yeah. like anything else. Is um, I'm hoping that it's good. Yeah, you know, 135 seems like a good number. Um, Definitely good number. Abilities here, but it's got cute charm. Uh, it's 100% female, and so sure. no comment. Um, so you know, cute charm is a chance to sometimes get some upside. It's a funny way to punish fake out. It's like a lot worse than um, than static and flame body. Obviously because of the gender thing, but also because yeah, you know, everyone funny, knows if gay women do not exist because women are not real. That that's just what uh, Game Freak is telling us. Yeah, track. yeah, for sure. Also, Cryogenal, they don't exist. Who is my NB homie? Um, yeah, you know, learns attract. Which is cool. I like Crotch. I really like Cleaver. Yeah, Cleaver. I wanted to get Cleaver and Samurott was my original plan with this team. Um, to try and get like Hazard Snack. Uh, and then instead I um, just uh, have Gastron for Spikes. Yeah, well. I'm definitely running Spikes Gastron every week. You should uh, prepare for it. This is 66, right? Think I'm... Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, 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 thank you. I've got rapid spin iron treads as well for that hazard removal. I, I was, and I've got Rotom as a spin blocker. <laughs> I, I was about to say I was looking at Rotom. I just like <laughs> it's the team. That, that, that's the, like, how how are they gonna yeah, stop yeah, me yeah, if yeah, I run a you know? You don't want them. I run spikes Gastron. Like, I've got Stone Axe Cleavor, and I've got Toxic Spikes on Salazzle with a spin blocker and my own spinner. You know, yeah, how, how are they gonna stop? Defog doesn't exist. Well, Defog has got very limited distribution in this format. Oh, just run contrary and Amorous. Exactly. Dude, I forgot about you Superior. I have lost and won so many games with Superior being Defogged into and getting the evasiveness boost. <laughs> it is the worst thing. I ran I, one one game, I was playing against a Superior, and I ran Kenai on uh, a Pokemon because that ev ignores evasiveness boosts. <laughs> like, <laughs> Kenai. <laughs> That's the only time that Kenai is like relevant in formats with um like the bans on uh, evasiveness boosting. Uh, and it's not great. like uh, yeah. And the great thing is that Skun Tank does have Kenai. Yes. So yeah. if I needed to, if if I wanted to um side poison jab to activate a weakness policy, no side acid spray for the defense boost, the special defense boost. Uh, and my opponents were like, ah, I am going to defog you so that you get uh, contrary and minus one, like plus one evasiveness and miss that. Uh, the Kenai will make it so that Skun Tank does, does hit my partner Pokemon. As you can yeah, see, yeah. I've got this old plant. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good plant. Uh, tri triple arrows is so weird. There's well, so it's many a, effects. It's a high critical hit rate, 50% uh, chance to lower defense, and a 30% chance to flinch? What's confusing about that? It's, <laughs> it's just... I don't know. <laughs> no, I, don't I feel like so it. many... I want a chestnut so because it's a ghost uh, community. It's but, suey move. Um, but instead I have Decidueye. Right, well, this Gastrodon, which is just always amazing. Sure, that uh, last season, um, right. someone picked up Gastrodon only to play me, uh, and I did lose to the Gastrodon because I didn't reprep. I'd already prepped when they didn't have Gastrodon, and I didn't reprep after they got Gastrodon. <laughs> so I had like two Pokemon whose entire idea was to click a Wave Crash or um, Sharpness Aqua Cutter, and then Gastrodon meant that they could not do that. And I think it got like a uh, good. Uh, it, I, I'm pretty sure it like. 
crit me through sight oh, like, when I was trying to like psycho cut through it. Um, but I still you get for not pressing for the gas for them. Considering that I had a team, which like a team plan, which hard lost to Gastrodon, the fact that I went, um, you know, I, I won one of those three games is, I think, a sign that my <laughs> team was okay. Um, I have Bruxish. It's like Veluza, but not uh, stronger and faster and bulkier. It looks like you. Were you trying to get for Furograph? No. And Tay just got it right for you, or were you no, always playing for Bruxish? I, I'd been planning Broxish ever since Samurai went. That's fair. I wanted to get two waters, so I got Gastron and Broxish. I, uh, I keep accidentally drafting Salazzle. I don't know how to point that out. Uh, it It's happened, like, three times now. I got it the past, like, month. Um, it's okay. There were a lot of really bad poisons, and I wanted a poison that wasn't bad, so... I don't know if I succeeded. I got two of them. <laughs> I just, I like, just finished a draft in another league, and I drafted Slazzle, and then I looked at my draft in this league, and I had drafted Slazzle, and I was like, why, why, do, why do I keep doing this? It's one of I them don't, singles. I don't like, if one of them is singles, yeah. It's so Nectic, good in singles. Not, I, there was a point really in Gen 7 where I think I forfeited to someone at lead because they had Slazzle. I was so, I, I hate playing against that Pokemon in singles. It is so unfun. I just I just set up toxic spikes and sacked it the first week. <laughs> oh yeah, it gets toxic spikes now. In Gen uh, seven and eight, it didn't. Um, but like, corrosion was just, uh, especially in a, in formats without boots, where your Pokemon yeah. are like taking more damage overall because they don't have boots. Corrosion toxic is just absolutely murdering your poison types, uh, your um, steels. Though the steels also don't like. I, I also used to draft Heatran every draft, which does not have a good. is not a Slazzle check. Dragable, you know, just in case Rotom isn't in, on the field to stop the rapid spins. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I said, the backup, the backup um, thing. You know, look. Uh, yeah, it's 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 not as good as Rotom, but like. Well, let's just pretend it's, it's like a DPP Donphan. Donphan and Rotom. Um, I would have gotten the slower ones, but I heard that they're not ghost type anymore, and I really needed the spin blocker. I'll save Wigglytuff. What? What all moves does Wigglytuff get? Because it, I know it gets it's helping some... hand. Do you remember our previous discussion about helping hand? Oh yeah, helping hand. That's it's also got yeah, parasol. That's all I needed. Parasol. Parasol. Encore. Do evil. Things. Does it have encore? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know it, if it's it, good yeah, at using it encore. On. Did you lose to Sly using oh, no, Because I thought you said you beat Sly. I don't know why there's a zero here. I think I just said using Choice Venting Link. What, sorry? I think I, I beat Sly using like Choice Venting Will, I think. Yeah, but season. like, who did you lose to, to Uncle from? If it wasn't Tain, it wasn't Sly. They're like, the Uncle uses. Was it Poppin? I've lost to a lot of people using Encore. That's fair. That's it's it's it's. I this this meta of OU. There's a lot of I think there's a lot of really cool things about it. I think Terra is amazing for singles. If you actually do Terra, I think singles drafts generally suck because Terra is the only thing that's interesting about current singles, and not doing free Terra is really boring. Um, I do Ubers because that's fun. Um, but like regular singles is just not not interesting. Um. But Terra on ladder oh, is no, so I fun. On I think I think like Terra preview is probably the best way to do it. So how do you feel about my team? Is it my team top heavy? Is it wide? Is it long game? Is it tempo? Um, I think it's fairly wide. Okay, fairly wide. How just, how wide is fairly wide? Uh, like slightly more than like the belly bolts, maybe. Maybe that's just me. Okay, I don't know. And how tempo like long game is it? I think it's interesting how many teams we have in wide with um yeah there's there's so this, many uh, wide teams. like restratification i really well i mean we have like <laughs> we have like nothing in the middle um so how many how tempo how long game well, like iron shreds is good like mid game um, mid-range sort of on yeah i, I think an amorous is, yeah. I, I don't know what an amorous does an amorous like can i've built like three teams like pull off from like 
contrary superpower stuff for mid range, but I feel like other than that, it's like I don't know. I feel like it's normally, I don't know. I feel like it's mid rangey to tempo. It's got like Spring Tide Storm, which has attack drops, which is pretty mid range. Um, yeah, I forgot to give it attack drops. Yeah, all right. Yeah, it's it's definitely tempo. But it's the only uh, one that doesn't get 100 percent accurate in rain. That sucks. Uh, I mean, I, I don't, I don't think I want rain, <laughs> um, but you know, it still sucks. <laughs> in fact, oh, I guess because that I you really can't don't get 100 percent accurate, like. Yeah. Well, you can't. It's strong gravity. Uh, I have no yeah. idea if any of my Pokemon learn gravity. I don't know what learns gravity in this format. There's uh, no Sandy way Shock Wigglytuff does. doesn't learn gravity. I What's feel right? like it just learned gravity, and I don't know. It does learn gravity. Wigglytuff from the gravity Pokemon. Oh, Stone Journal learns gravity. Dude, Stone Journal, top five Pokemon? For sure. Power Spot, it's an insane ability. Dude, I could run both of my fairy Pokemon with uh, thing like gravity, <laughs> and they'd both be grounded fairy types. <laughs> Uh, I feel like Gastrodon, Gastrodon is like mid range. I feel like it can also be long game. I don't know. Nah, Definitely. Gastrodon here is purely offensive. I'm gonna be clicking Surf with Bruxish and then oh, Muddy yeah. Water with Gastrodon, and everyone will get KO'd. Scarf Gastrodon, best set, for sure. I was thinking Tailwind, but you know that too. No, 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 no. that's lame. Gastrodon can take teams on by, by themselves. Gastron is, is pretty it's a pretty wild mod. It's got that 92 special attack, that 83 attack. Dude, uh, Disquake? I don't know. I'm trying to think of where, what yours because there's a lot of different. I think you're fairly like mid range to tempo. I don't feel like you black. So here? Like, there's not. Yeah, right right there. Okay. You just already placed your team. You're like, I, I know what it is. I just didn't That's want it to be like in, in all of this. <laughs> this is about what you've said. Um, you know. That's fair. I, I have no idea. Like, I have a lot of different ideas, and I don't know how they're going to feel in the actual game. Because Namorous is a Pokemon I'm very unfamiliar with. Iron Threads is a Pokemon I'm very unfamiliar with. Cleavor is a Pokemon I'm very unfamiliar with. I used a Situai once. Um. <laughs> I'm going to look at Cleaver because I feel like I feel like it can be really good. Yeah, I just think it's a bit funny. How many points did we have it at? Uh, 14, I think. 14? We had Samurott at 12, and I think that Samurott is about as good if not better I, I i don't know i was like talking about whether i should get cleavor or samurai and people were like oh yeah, yeah just go cleavor cleavor is so much weirder rock bug is such a weird typing it is such a weird typing but it has 135 attack which is like really good and a yeah rock yeah. steel and water uh, weaknesses and normal and poison resists what do you do <laughs> like are you supposed to terra steel with this like, I don't... I think that getting Gastrodon means that I can Terra Steel with it. Otherwise, you just get hit with water move and die. Um, yeah. But also, there's, like, no water moves at this generation, so... You get, like... I have no idea. You get Rock Slide, you get CC... You get Stone Axe. You get U-Turn. You, you get x with um, Sharpness. It's very strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, think yeah. it's the strongest Sharpness-boosted move tied with Sacred Sword. Or a Sacred Sword 85. Sacred Sword is... 90? No, is Exodus a 90 or is it 80? Exodus is 80. Okay, yeah. Dude, Sacred Sword Exodus is... Exodus is 80. Gallade getting Sacred Sword wound up being really just gross and not fun. <laughs> I'm so glad they gave Gallade a buff. No, nah, man. Something. Gallade was not bad last gen. I mean, for one thing, Gallade like, still had like the beat-up justified thing. Uh, and then they like gave less beat-up this gen, but it's like it was still good. I mean, especially during they took max. It away from beat up. Yeah, they took it away from Doug. I had Doug last season, and I would not have minded beat up. Mostly to break sashes. Um, but I wound up losing to Scarf Gallade because it had. And I was bulky Doug Trio, and I died because it, it had um, Aqua Cutter <laughs> with sharpness, and I would have lived if it didn't have sharpness. <laughs> Why does it have Aqua Cutter? <laughs> I. Why is Aqua Cutter 70 base power? If it was 75, okay. the loser would be a much better Pokemon. I wish the loser, like, had. I don't know. I wish it had 75 base power Aqua Cutter. Yeah. I, I genuinely think that one changed. Because it was good last season. Anyways, we, we've gone very heavily on tangent. 
So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. it seems the teams right. favor tempo and like tempo in mid range pretty heavily, right? There's only two teams that we thought it did particularly well in the long oh, yeah, game. There's, there's very few long game. There yeah. were a few teams that like, did there's... that did just as well in tempo or long game because they were very wide. Um, but like, you know, we don't have like a Tats Dozer or anything. Oh, also, I meant Sora. I no. will also be making a video with Sora. I forgot to mention that. That's the other coach I'm making a video with. And um, I think we'll be doing right. something on Purple Rain's channel together. I might make videos, but that's that's a lot of work. It's fun. You know, it, it's a good time. It's a funny laugh. Uh, I thank everyone for watching. Please leave a comment down below about uh, how you think that this uh, format may have impacted the overall um, teams because I, I really expected a lot more of them to feel very top heavy and maybe we'll see that in the other um, like sky conferences well I mean I'm sure when we look at your team your team's gonna be like like here um, you know. <laughs> you, you, you're that top heavy long game team that we've all been waiting for um, but we'll see yeah all right. thank you all for watching bye